can switch between Oh, yes, I can switch them when I'm in there. Without yeah, and so I want a two channel. So you see my other channels are right here. I can just, I can turn all those on and now basically I picked a four channel scope. It's always a four channel scope. It's just the presets going into it. All right, so I want two channel. I want my second channel. You see that's defaulted to what? What is that? That's KV, that's ignition. I don't want an ignition probe. I want volts DC. And this is a five volt pull down design. So what do you guys feel about 20? I don't like it. I'm gonna drop it down to 10. And the reason I'd use 10 is I just want my square waves to be bigger on the screen. Make sense? So now we just gotta hook up two channels. Now I have one problem here with our setup. My Varus leads are very short. And I can't move that any closer because I'm, I'm hooked up to the board, or can I? I honestly like my Pico for this. Um, for a couple reasons, the leads are a lot longer and the comparison of the frozen pictures with the zoom feature and the cursors is so much better. Uh, this is a good scope, don't get me wrong, but doing it, I believe we're gonna be doing a cam crank relationship type waveform and I have a ton of stored files on my laptop from my Pico, and I really think that that's the one we should use. Um, I don't wanna mess you guys up because this is the scope you're going to be using, but I think for what we're doing right now, I wanna, I wanna use my Pico. Yeah. You just, as long as I just wanna see like, I wanna see I care how you get it. Uh, it. Yeah, it's just gonna allow me to compare better to, I have literally 2,000 stored files on my Pico, and there's a Pico website that we can link right to. Uh, it's on Pico Auto. As long as my scope's connected to my laptop, I have access to this database of known good waveforms, which is what we might need. Okay, so I need like two minutes to just switch up here what I'm doing. Crank sensor connectors right here. It's three wire sensor. See the gray black? That's my signal. Cam sensor connectors over here, and it's a tan and yellow. Uh, right there. So it's as simple as connecting these leads. These are BNC type leads, um, which is named after some, some guy. BNC is his initials. And what they have internal to them is uh, the inside's the positive and then the outer shell is the negative. And then you go to the other side of the cable and you have your regular style test leads. So that port will go the BNC port will go into the scope. The red channel, we will go to the cam. Black lead, that's going to go to battery negative. When at all possible, we wanna use battery negative. I'm going to back probe the cam signal on the harness side. I'm so happy that this one's easy to get to. Some of these cars, it's not as easy as this to connect to. So you know when you're in there, right? Yeah, it's just by feel. I can kind of feel the, the metal pin inside. You gotta be careful you don't mess up a terminal too. It'll shock the hell out of you. It won't shock you, but yeah. Some components you back probe will give you a little zing. If you're doing a, a fuel injector or an ignition coil primary, they'll spike upwards of a few hundred volts and they'll give you a little bit of a pinch when you, when you back probe them. Nothing that's crazy. It might scare you the first time it happens. A little extra sugar in your coffee. Yeah. You gotta learn to enjoy it. And then the crank is this guy. Yeah, do it real early in the morning. And again, we, what we want to do generally is is we want to back probe these on the harness side because the harness side is the side that the computer is connected to. I don't like the way that feels. Should be good there. My grounds. For these two channels, I'm going to just piggyback them. Nice little feature of the Pico leads. Cool. And then these two leads, I am going to. These are color coordinated too, if you look at them. And channel B is red, and then my leads are color coordinated. Makes it easy to know what you're connected to. And then I just USB, plug that into my laptop, and we're ready to go. Cool? Yeah, all right, go, go back to your seats and I'll set this up. Okay, the default on this scope, I just loaded it, is on the auto setting on channel one, and I can change that, but I'm not gonna teach you this scope right now, um, not in detail anyway. I'm going to pick a plus and minus 10 volt, why? 
because I know it's a five volt Hall effect. That's just my personal preference. Channel B plus and minus 10 volts. My scaling for B is over here, okay? My scaling for A is over here. And you see right away we have some noise in this, in this uh, signal. That's five volts right now, I see it, 5.1. And my, my blue trace is uh, pretty, near, pretty much near zero. I don't like that noise. Uh, sometimes the noise can be a bad ground. That's exactly what it looks like. This ground may be not healthy. No, that's okay. Um, something else that I may end up doing is putting a filter in here, or I may end up using the sensor ground instead of battery ground to clean up the signal. I may do that. Um, time base wise, remember the Pico is a scope that we can take a lot of data and we can zoom in on it. So I know that going into this. And so what I'll do is I'll take a longer time base. We'll, we'll go, um, I'm gonna go one second just because I know I'll be good doing that. And um, okay, one other thing. That maintainer won't cause that maintainer. It could be the maintainer, right. yep. Right. Well, if I turn it off and it goes away, then we'll know. Yep. It's still there. Maybe not quite as much. There is a little bit, eh, not really. Um, okay, you heard the way this engine cranks. It doesn't crank consistently, it tries to start. And what I want to do for this cam crank relationship picture, I wanna make it so it doesn't do that because what that'll do is speed up the crank and slow down the crank and speed up the crank and it'll make the signal look difficult to interpret. Uh, so I'm going to disconnect the primary of the ignition coil to keep spark from occurring altogether. We don't even know that there's spark. I'm assuming that there is based on the way it sounds. So I'm, I'm going to just take a precaution here and I'm not taking the secondary wire off of my ignition coil because I would be charging the coil and not giving it anywhere to go. That would not be a good thing. I am disconnecting the primary of the ignition coil. Okay, uh, Josh, can you crank this for me, please? And keep cranking until I tell you to stop, okay? Wait, that alarm's gonna go off. Just reach in if you can, shorty. Go ahead. You can't? All right, we'll Dude, jump in there. The 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 okay. I just didn't want that alarm going off. Uh, you You're good. Off, go okay. Off. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay, that works. Lots of hash in that signal. That's not an issue. We can, we can clean some of that up. We can uh, do that by throwing a little filter in channel B, throwing a little filter in channel A. Um, I, there's other ways I can clean that up, but I, I think that's good enough for us to look at this signal. Um, I, I, there's one thing that uh, I am not doing uh, good enough right now, and that is I don't have enough repetition yet. Um, and I can't zoom out on the Pico. I only can zoom in, so I need to retake this capture. Does that make sense? Um, something else is maybe some triggering issues here. Not triggering, maybe some sample rate issues. Do I have detail? Yeah, they're pretty clean, pretty nice square. So okay, we're okay with our sample rate, but I'm going up in time, so I'm gonna double that. I just went from one million samples to two million. I'm not, I don't wanna miss anything here, okay? We just covered sample rate. For you guys that missed that, Kyle, did you miss the sample? Go to my YouTube channel, type in PicoScope Basics Part 1, PicoScope Basics Part 2, and that will give you a great overview of sampling and time base and even, we did it on the Varus, but for you guys that I did it with, you can uh, look up PicoScope Basics Part 1 and Part 2 would be the suggested video. So I just doubled my sample rate. I'm doubling my time base. I'm going to, um, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to five second screen. And in that case, I'm gonna go to three million samples. And uh, one more time, Josh. Okay, stop. 
I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm, I'm not gonna use battery ground anymore. I'm going to use the sensor ground because I don't wanna use a filter because sometimes a filter can eliminate detail in a signal um, and we're worried about detail right now. So I'm just changing this up. Do you remember sensor ground color? I said it to you guys. Light blue and... Uh, uh, black with a light blue tracer, right? And I can use sensor ground on either sensor because they share the ground. Stuff we'll be talking about, shared sensor grounds. I just need to make sure that this doesn't touch. See if this is cleaner now. One more time, Josh, sorry. I should have warned you I was gonna make you get back in there. Even if there's still hash, I'm not sweating that. That's not bothering me. Good. Yep. Much cleaner. Okay, that works. Just pause it there, go back a page. What do you guys think? Got our repetition there, don't we? Much, much cleaner signal. And then what we can do is we can, we can kind of look at, uh, I wanted to have at least two rotations of the cam. There's our groupings of four. So you see four, four, and four. That'd be 360, four, four, and four. There's the next 360, you guys follow that? The blue's on a crank, right? The blue is the crank, yep. And the uh, red is the cam. Questions so far? We want 720 of this thing. I'll pull in 720. This looks like it's off to me. The, these, these relationships look off. That's good. Yeah, they're not very even. Well, I'm, which part do you not like, Adam? Blue you like the skinny part here and fat? Are you talking about that? Yeah, or? In the blue, the three blue on, on, on your second coming up there for the uh, cam, it's off of the crank. And it might not be by much, but it's off. Are you talking, you're talking about that right here? Yeah. Okay, but we, but we don't know, but that's this edge. So this is the falling edge of the cam. That's the leading edge. So this edge, if you're looking at this one, it would be this one. And you're saying that looks off to, compared to that? No. Okay. So it, in for, as far as where this lines up, guys, we don't know if this is right or wrong yet. Make sense? Yeah. Um, there's multiple things we can do here, but... One of them, I think at this point, the easiest one is, is to pull up a known good waveform on a 4.0 liter Jeep. I think I have one. I think I have one. And this is one of the nice features of the Pico. I take this cam crank. This is, I'm saying, unknown. I'm, I must have had the... That's only one file. What's my time base? 500 milliseconds. Here's the problem though. This engine was running, not cranking. So I really need a longer time base. Our timing's off. We can just see it. We can just <laughs> bounce back and forth between. I wanted to show you that you can pull a reference waveform in and really make comparison awesome, right? Um, but you guys can see that now, it's... A good question. Yeah. How do we know which one's off? We don't. Yet. Hold on. Yeah. Yet. Can you show us how I think seeing so. that the timing is off? Yeah, hold on. Let's just make sure we all got a good perspective here. Um, I want you guys to see I want you guys to see this. This is the known good. <laughs> look at the trailing edge of the cam and then look at the leading edge of the cam. Do you see how this one, if you look close, that's not exactly centered, but pretty darn close. You see it? Not yeah. centered like not quite fifty percent. Um, and then if you look at the leading edge of the cam, that one's almost 50%. All right, just so you have a perspective, let's go back to our vehicle now. Look where the cam is occurring. Uh -oh. I mean, I don't even need to yeah. 
zoom in to see that we have an issue here. We have a cam crank relationship. One of the concerns that I have with this vehicle is, is the crank sensor, was the crank sensor installed properly? Is it hitting the flywheel? And what I can tell you guys from looking at this waveform is that crank sensor is not hitting the flywheel. If it was hitting the flywheel, it would be very erratic looking. Yeah, this is a very nice, uh, no, you won't hear it. It's a plastic sensor on a metal, you wouldn't hear it. You, I have heard them before, but in a cranking situation, I don't, I don't think you'd hear it. How, how do you know if it's... Uh, the cam or the crank? Yeah. I don't. Do I'm thinking. <laughs> Way to put me on the spot. How, how does one figure this out? You need answers. There's multiple ways to do things, and without knowing exactly... <clears throat> No. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get at. Well, right. Is it is it the timing chain that's off? Is it the distributor that's off? Or is it the flywheel that's uh, messed up? Does a lot of us understand what you're showing us? Yes. But then we just want to know this. Once you have the information, it's useless if you don't know what to do with it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Have, yeah. So we kind of want to know the steps we I, take I'm, to hit that. That's why we're here, man. Yeah, absolutely. How about one wire off on the count? Well, one wire off on the cap uh, wouldn't mess up the uh, relationships. All the way around? Yeah. On the wrong position? No, the one wire off on the cap, you're just changing when the rotor is firing the uh, secondary that would not alter this waveform because that's inside the distributor. So the old school way of, okay, our distributor's off, let's move <coughs> the wires one time it will not work on this because your cam sensor is off. If the distributor is off one tooth, and what you're saying, on an old, and it's an old school method, was let's just move them all and reset the timing. You can't do that here because timing, number one, is not done by the distributor, it's done by the flywheel. And number two, the cam signal, this red uh, square wave, what it has is one window per, per distributor rotation, there's one window. And so by you rotating the secondary of the wires up top would not fix anything. We would just add problems to this. Does that make sense, Jim? That our relationship in that window is off. So mechanically splined, that distributor was installed improperly. He didn't mention anything about putting a distributor in it. Or the flywheel is cracked and shifted. Or the timing chain is off. That's what I was actually originally talking about this motor was the chain not the flywheel not actually not the chain the gear the gear well, that when i say chain that includes the gears in my mind I, so because I, I have a lot of friends with these yeah and those teeth start to spread out and so when the teeth spread out so this chain yeah i got gotcha. you well there's ways we can do this i'm i'm not totally sure which method i want to pick right now um, in cylinder pressure is one I'm thinking of. I have a transducer that I can put in the cylinder and I can measure cylinder pressures and then look at valving. Um, that would give me an indication of the chain, I think. Uh, another one would be, uh, I, I would like to do this one just because I want to show it to you. Not necessarily it will give us an answer to what we're looking for yet. But I'd like to show you the relative compression cranking waveform compared to ignition timing just to show you where it is. Um, because we are saying we have a timing problem and we're saying that our spark is occurring at the wrong time. I, I want to do that one next. It won't answer, Kyle, what our problem is, but I think it's worth learning that test as another guide. If you don't have a known good cam crank relationship to go by, is there another test that we can learn to develop that would say timing is off and this would be it. So it's a cranking compression. It's real easy to set up. Um, all I'm going to do is use a, this is the high amp probe that I mentioned to you guys uh, where the jaws are bigger. So that is a, a high amp probe. I'm gonna put that um, I'll leave my cam and crank where it is. We'll, we'll, get, we'll leave that in here. So the nice thing about having a four channel scope is we can do that. I'll go on uh, channel three for the high amp probe. Where does this go? On the battery. Right on battery. So um, battery positive, battery negative, doesn't really matter, right? I can go on either one. Just need to make sure that my arrow is pointing to the correct direction of current flow. 
So that'll be compression. And now here's the thing. Um, I need to plug my ignition coil back in because I need my firing event of my coil to know for, for timing. And I don't want the vehicle to try to start. So I think what I'll do is unplug the injectors to keep the vehicle from trying to start. Yes, Kyle. How does that read compression? Yes. You should have stuck around yesterday. Oh, I guess that would be with the rope. That's okay. I, I can. I'll get that I'll get you up to speed, Kyle. All right. I unplugged my. I unplugged my fuel injectors. I'm, I'm plugging my coil back in, and then I'm using one more lead, guys. This this lead is. Um, is a secondary uh, pickup. I'm just gonna put that over my coil wire. I could pick one plug wire if I wanted, but I'll go coil wire because I can see every firing event of the ignition coil using this, and that'll go to my fourth channel. What do you, um, what do you, I'm not sure what you're asking me, Jim. Like on some cars, the time oh, cam crank correlation? Yeah, apparently, that's a good question. Uh, you guys hear what Jim asked that basically, why aren't we setting a cam crank correlation code? Um, it's just a stupid system, would be my answer to that. And all, yeah, that not all of them will. I have seen vehicles like this just set a crank code and it should be a correlation code. We have a crank sensor. It shouldn't be setting a crank sensor fault. It should be a correlation code. It's not. But one of the things we don't want to do is get lost on that. We know it's off. I don't care that it's not setting that it should be, but that's not going to change my direction at all. And one of the hard parts about doing this when you're new is that type of stuff. That type of stuff will make you walk a different path for a while that you shouldn't be on. And experience will tell you, let's not walk that path right now. That may be somewhere we need to go in some circumstances, but let's stay with what we know right now. And what we know right now is we have a clear cam crank relationship problem from two different vehicles. Make sense? Okay, so this one, I uh, just need to turn on my other two channels. Um, let's get rid of the zoom. We'll retake this shot again, with the exception of, I gotta tell my, my tool what I'm using. I'm using my current clamp, my 600 amp current clamp is the one I'm using for channel C and then channel D is an ignition probe. I'm not too worried about this one. Um, my secondary, I may have to adjust some of these. There it is. I run this, I should have my other channels displayed. Oh, can't set that to a works. We have 20 kV, four channels, lots of data. Injectors are unplugged, so it shouldn't start. Josh, can you crank this for me again? Top left. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. We, you want me to clean that up for you? Better? So the, uh, the height of these spikes, let me, let me look at just a little bit more here. I see something else I don't like. You guys should see it too. There's no arch. You got low compression. That's right. Very good eye there, Pat. One of these cylinders has low compression. Oh, there it is. So no, no matter what we do with this vehicle from this point on, we have a mechanical problem with this engine. Um, I'm not sure what cylinder that is yet. We can redo this to figure out what cylinder that is. Uh, that wasn't the main reason I wanted to do this test. The main reason I wanted to do this test is I wanted to see where the firing event was occurring in relation to top dead. It's not too far off, but it does look like it's late. You see the peak and you see the timing is occurring after uh, the, uh, the part of that peak, and that shouldn't be the case. Uh, we should be top dead or before on this uh, in general, but I, it's closer than I expected to see, to be honest with you. I don't think that I could use this test alone and say to you that my timing is off on this engine.
Okay. Um, I still think it is, but this isn't going to be the test that I want to use for that. I think the next step is definitely in cylinder pressure, and that might answer both things, which is where exactly is this timing occurring, and then also we can maybe determine why it's off, if it's cranker. If the timing's off so much, wouldn't that, that would mess with your compression too. It would, but do you think it would be single cylinder specific? No. Less or more specific. Well, you got two of them on, in there that's lower. That one is that one. I'm looking at six ounces. Okay, one, one of the characteristics of a low compression cylinder is no. the very next one will be higher because of it. So, so I only see one low one. Where is your second one? Right next to the low one on the left or the left. This one? Yeah. So if I were to, I can do something here to help us. Isn't this fun? Yeah. yeah. Seriously, do you guys, are you enjoying this? I'm enjoying it. Uh, I think you're, okay, I, I see what you're saying, but look how close it is here, Pat. Yeah. Right, and then I think we're, we're being nitpicky by, um, by saying that, like, you know, I'm not sure. A little bit low there, okay, a little bit, but relatively speaking, I'm, I'm more worried about just that guy. Why is this guy higher? It just has to do with crankshaft speeding up and the compression pressures right after a low one is why the next one would be high. And so what you can actually have when you have a low one, and I've seen this before, and I have this in my book too in section one where I show this event, but after a low one, you'll actually have a downward slope. So this one's higher, this one's higher, and it will drop because of that low one. So it might be that why you're seeing that now that one doesn't kind of fit that scenario but we could have this kind of uh, effect going on because of that low one yeah well it's not an illusion it's actually there and it has to do with the crank speeding up when it hits that low compression cylinder and then so that creates a higher compression pressure on the next uh, event Oh no, we, I, we still have an issue up here. There's no question that we have a cam crank relationship problem that we're not, we're not uh, debating, but we have another problem. And I'm saying that that cylinder, which is that cylinder, is not being caused by a cam crank relationship problem. We have another problem on this G. Could that throw the timing off? Could the compression throw the timing off? Um, timing can throw compression off, yeah, but, but, if timing's throwing compression off, it would be universal, not one specific right. cylinder. Right. That's what you're getting at. Does that make sense? There's a problem in one of the cylinders. We have a problem in one of the cylinders, but I'm not focusing on that right now. I don't care about that. Do we want to know what cylinder that is? We yeah, do. Yeah. We do eventually, but right now, no. I think I really want to focus on the in-cylinder pressure next. That just it's not flat line either. It still should run. Exactly, I'm with you there. This timing to me is close enough that this vehicle should run. So what's going on here? Did, maybe he put his spark plug wires on wrong on, on his cap, which you had mentioned moving the wires, but I think you had mentioned that as far as the relationship goes and changing that. Um, these wires may not be right on the cap, but that doesn't fix our cam crank relationship right. problem, and it won't. Like Would, it might make it run, but it's not going to fix our cam crank relationship problem, and it's not going to fix our crank sensor fault code. Or the compression. Or the compression problem on that one cylinder. Maybe could it be just washed out? Uh, that one cylinder could be washed out. Remember he changed the injectors? Yeah, absolutely, we could have cylinder wash in there, and we don't want to jump the gun on that right now. I have seen that. I've had cylinder wash that I've mistaken as a no compression in a cylinder, and once you get the engine up and running and redo that check, everything's great. So again, uh, all the more reason we're not going to focus on that one single low cylinder right now. I think identifying which one would be helpful right now, I think we can end it there today. What do you guys think? Let's ID that cylinder, we'll stop there, pick this up tomorrow with an in-cylinder pressure transducer and do some more uh, testing like this. Cool? Okay, so let's ID that. So for me to ID this, um, let me clear my ink. First thing I want to do is I want to save this pattern because that's a pretty nice waveform. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, I saved that waveform. Uh, what do I need to do to identify it? How do I, how do I identify what cylinder that is on this? I have to retake the picture. Or something, figure out, put it on one it of the one one check one specific one and know which one it is. No, a specific. I don't want to go to injector, uh, Adam and Ryan, because an injector firing event does not occur at top dead center. It occurs in various locations. Believe it or not, injectors will fire way, way before the intake valve ever even opens and it will not be timed with top dead. I wanna stay with ignition. All I need to do is I just need to shift. Guys, listen. I just need to shift this to a spark plug wire. I'm gonna go to the number one spark plug wire. So now, listen, instead of firing every single time a cylinder fires, which the coil does, I'm gonna have one spike for every six. Make sense? Yeah. Start that one more time, Josh. Okay. Go, Josh. Do it. Oh, wait. <coughs> Good. Okay. Now start. Okay. I'm ready. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. Good. Which cylinder is that? Something changed drastically here. Do, do you see the timing of my number one firing event now? Where was our timing before? It was after and they were all showing after. Look where it is now. It's way before. That's showing me timing that's way off. Did this move at all? No, this stayed pretty much consistent. That is bothersome, a lot. Uh, I'm just here. I'm just talking about this here. Let me uh, make this a little bigger scale for you guys. Yeah, where are you showing that where it's firing? Hold on. That orange spike is what we were looking at before. The orange spike is the firing of the secondary, right? That's when timing occurs. The timing of that spike, all of them in the last picture was just after top dead center for each of these. And that was the one we were looking at and I was saying we're a little late in timing. Look where we are now. Yeah, Way before, that's a huge change just from going to a plug wire. Put that in the back of your mind, that's telling us something. That's not why we did this test, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, that's telling us, do we have a cap rotor problem? Do something in that distributor is altering this timing when it shouldn't be. I don't know what the problem is with that yet. I just wanted to do this to identify this cylinder. Five. What's the firing order on an inline six Jeep? One, I can't remember. Three, two, five. I'm going, jumping over to the Varus. Three, two, I'm just, four, two, five, three, six. are you sure? No. We need to be uh, sure here, guys. Uh, we need to be 100% sure. One, six, five, four, one, two. Three, one. We can't get, these can't be guesses. Guys, look, pay attention. Pay attention. Look, guided, guys, look, I want you guys to know where to find this. Guided component tests. Go to fuel injection. Go to ignition tests. Go to component information. And sometimes, it's not there, sometimes they'll give me the firing order. I got no firing order. I need a firing order on this Jeep. Somebody Google it. 96 4 0 Jeep. I don't feel like going to Mitchell. If it's wrong, I don't care right now. The point is, is knowing how to do this. Okay? One, five, three, six, two, four. One, five, three, six, two, four. Number two cylinder has low compression. Make sense? You guys understand I started counting one on that orange spike because that was where I put my plug wire? Yeah. Yep. Pretty sweet, right? Mm -hmm. so cylinder two is getting. Cylinder two has no compression. Well, it has compression, but it's weak. Um, I'm gonna save that real quick. I wanna take this one more time and I'll let you guys go. Yeah, because people get confused with those as well. Okay. Um, I want one more. You can't leave yet. Just give me two seconds. Uh, I'm disconnecting my cam. 
I'm going to a KV. I want two ignition ones because something's different here and I just need to scratch this itch. Matt understands. He's got headpiece. Matt, like week two. This is going to get No way, we're kindred spirit, man. I'm not making fun of him. On the inside. Okay, last crank, Josh. I won't make you do it again. Play it again, Sam. Today. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> yeah. Good. Wait. I'm I'm missing my waveform. Where where'd it go? Yeah, uh, I didn't. Did you turn your number one off. Channel B. Oh, I was, I was in too low of a. Too uh, just I had my scale set too too high. Let's do that one more time on a twenty. All right, go ahead. I lied. It's another one. <laughs> Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. Do you hear the low compression yeah. in the crank? Da, 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 da. That's pretty sweet that we can hear that. What happened to the red line? Why is it all? It's there. What's it's, the, what's the red he put line? it on a 20 instead of a 10. I just changed the scaling. And, and I don't know. Here's the thing. My concern was... My concern <coughs> was when we took the original picture, we were way after top dead center in the in the firing events of this okay and now and when we retook it on the plug wire we are way before so what i just did i have one on the coil wire one on the plug wire should they be identical yes. if the coil fires for the number one cylinder goes into the distributor comes out of the distributor shouldn't the timing be the same my question is just answered which is they are the same that's what i want to see why did it look different the first time we cranked it? Now I can't answer that question, but now I at least know for tonight that nothing's going on in between going in and coming out. Does that make sense? Spark-wise. Spark we got number one, the coil's firing going in, it's coming out on the number one, and our timing is exact. My red and orange traces are over top of each other. You see it? That orange trace is what? That's my number one spark plug wire. Yeah. What's the red trace? Coil, 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 coil. So is that t in time? Yes, it is. But is my timing on as far as in relation to top dead center? Not even close. I can actually give you a measurement on that. So there's my cursors. There's zero, there's 720. Take this cursor and measure here. Should give me degrees now. 23 degrees, I think I'm doing that right, or it might be like this, delta, that's 24, yeah, so 24 degrees before top dead center is where that spark is occurring. That, for cranking an engine over, um, that is way too far advanced. We want to be very near top dead, 10 degrees maybe at most. But anyway, that's, I don't know if I'm exactly top dead. We're gonna redo this test tomorrow when we do the in cylinder one. We're gonna find out exactly where the timing is occurring. I'll show you this procedure too. Really cool, still doesn't address, guys, uh, what our problem is. Is it the flywheel? Is it the distributor? Is it the timing chain? Are you gonna be able to tell? Which I one think so, I think so. I, this will be my first one um, with this particular call. It's gonna be difficult knowing flywheel design here. With knowing what you what we just found out with where it's firing, do you think that has is relative to the compression you did? No. I still that's, think that's another issue. I still think our low compression on number two is a completely separate issue. Because it's consistently on that cylinder and, and timing is not on other cylinders mm -hmm. jumping. If it was jumping around, then I'd say okay, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I'll think about it. You guys think about it too, as far as how to, how to that's your homework tonight. You think about how do we identify uh, which one is which. Okay, good. I was just looking to see if that was still recording. How to identify, is it the flywheel that's off? Is it the chain that's off? Is it the distributor? You guys think about that, sleep on it. 
We'll pick this up tomorrow.